breaking news. A simply shocking scene in Baltimore. A large stretch of the Francis Scott Key Bridge up in Baltimore gone. Rescue operations underway right now to find people who went into the water in the collapse. It happened around 1.30 this morning and video posted to social media shows the moment that a container ship hit a bridge pier, causing the sections of roadway near that pier to drop into the Patasco River at the mouth of the harbor. This is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted. That was Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott speaking there. We are following huge breaking news on this Tuesday morning. It's the collapse of the Francis Key or Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. This is where I-695 crosses the Patapsco River. It is not downtown, but spans a wider part of the harbor. There are still so many questions to answer, but here's what city and state officials said just over an hour ago. There is no sign that this was a terrorist act. While there are no confirmed fatalities, first responders have hours of searching left to go. Shipping operations at the very busy port of Baltimore are suspended. Now we want to check in with our reporters. Our first crews arrived at the scene more than four hours ago. Let's start with Jacqueline Quinn. Uh, Jacqueline is at the north side end of the bridge in Dundalk, Maryland, with the latest on what we know about this tragic collapse. Yeah, so we have a lot of questions we're expecting to ask the governor this time of Maryland as he uh, approaches here for a press conference any moment now. But at this point, just look at the scene. It is really jarring to see the site of this bridge. Uh, you know, as you can see there, it just abruptly ends. And if you look to the right of that, that's the cargo ship. Some of the containers there on the side with the bridge uh, resting over towards the left hand side just in the water there. So this happened around 1:30. There have been multiple agencies that have responded out here, including the Coast Guard. They've been pouring uh, their efforts into this to help uh, to help uh, with the people who may be trapped in the water. And if they were driving, they would have fallen about 200 feet below into that water. Uh, and the collision didn't just take out a, a section of that bridge. It was nearly the entire span of it. Uh, when this cargo ship named the Dolly crashed into the center portion of the key bridge. Now, this is a logistical nightmare as not only for cars, but uh, ships transporting uh, cargo in the area. Now, many of the cars, they can't use the tunnels. They're restricted to doing that. Uh, so really, we are going to ask, hopefully here, what's going to happen to the shipping traffic? Will it be diverted? Do they wait? And what will happen to some of the cars here? We are expecting an update any moment now. It looks like it could be at 9 or 9.30. But for now, we'll send it back to you guys. Jacqueline, thank you so much. Let's get now to one of our other reporters who is the first on the scene and one of the first our Jess Arnold. She stationed at the other side of the bridge, the southwest side, which is slightly closer to the district. Let's check in with her now and Jess, how busy are the operations at your location? It's constant that we're seeing different emergency vehicles come through here. We just saw within the last minute Baltimore County Emergency Management come through following a fire truck. We also saw right before them another water rescue crew going down there. So they've just been feeding as many crews as they can because the name of the game right now is search and rescue. Again, the number that they keep circulating around is about seven people they believe are still unaccounted for that they're searching for in those waters. They did pull two people from the water earlier this morning. One who they say refused treatment and wasn't really injured and another who is experiencing serious injuries was taken to a hospital nearby. Now you're looking at some of that footage there of that just crazy collapse. And now that the sun is up, they said that'll help them get a better idea of what they are dealing with because this is a huge search area that they're dealing with. They said their sonar, even in the darkness, was able to pick up multiple vehicles, but they weren't sure how many vehicles they did find in the water. And they're still assessing how many people might be in there, confirming that some of the people on the bridge at the time were MDOT crew members earlier. Now we also have gotten an update from the company that chartered that cargo ship. They said that all of their crew members, that's about 22 people who were on board at the time, have been accounted for and were not injured in this incident. Another question has been, were there any fuel spills? And the company is saying that there was no pollution that they have detected here. Now I want to read just a little bit of this brief statement that they sent us. They said, we are horrified by what has happened in Baltimore and our thoughts are with all of those affected. So again, right now, a lot of the officials here with Baltimore City, Baltimore County say that their main focus is on the families that are impacted by this tragedy. So I want you to take a listen um, from Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott. 
discussion right now should be about the people, the souls, the lives that we're trying to save. Uh, there will be a time to discuss about a bridge and how we get a bridge back up. But right now, there are people in the water that we have to get out. And that's the only thing we should be talking about. Right, and that, that is very cold water. It's just starting to warm up a little bit with the sun coming up now. Those dive crews are going to continue to assess, um, you know, who they can find, who they can help out. Of course, Jacqueline said that she'll be bringing you an update in about half an hour on more of the investigation, a little bit of a statement from the governor. But we'll keep an eye here as we continue to see crews come in and out of here, bringing supplies to try to help anyone they can pull out of that water. Guys. All right, Jess Arnold, thank you for that. We also sent our Scott Broom to the scene as soon as this happened. Scott, good morning. You've been talking to people in that area, and one woman you spoke with actually heard the bridge collapse. Well, a, a lot of people on this end of the bridge, this neighborhood, Turner Station, part of Dundalk, Maryland, uh, felt the rattle and the shake and uh, the thunder as the bridge came down. We'll talk to some of those in a moment. First, let me set the scene. This is uh, the northern foot of the bridge here, uh, the MDTA police headquarters. It's a staging area uh, for much of the rescue that's going on. Uh, and while I was here, I was able to discuss briefly with an individual, unfortunately in broken Spanish on my part, who said that he has three coworkers uh, he's deeply concerned about. He doesn't know uh, their fate or where they are. He was here because he's concerned and he thinks they may have been among those who were doing some of the concrete work on the bridge overnight. All of that unconfirmed and uh, we're trying uh, just like he is to get as much information as available. So that's the type of folks we're talking to here behind me. These are houses that are right next to the roadway here. Uh, and a lot of people I spoke with, first of all, they're just in disbelief because of this iconic bridge is missing. And then uh, listen to Ver uh, Venetia Barbie, who I spoke to a while ago. She described hearing the bridge come down last night. This morning, it was around 1.30, and um, I live right here at, uh, off of New Pittsburgh Avenue, me and my 87-year-old mom, and um, the building has shook so severely, and it woke me up. I was scared, and I didn't know what was going on. I ran out to, to look to see what had happened because... We had planes that fly across. I heard all the police and fire trucks and, you know, people just racing down here on Brawnen Highway, coming this way, but never to think that that would happen, that the bridge had collapsed. I thought maybe it was a, just a major terrible accident and everything. So what, what, later on, I, um, people started calling me. My phone was blowing up because they know this is the route I've been taking since 1982. I had worked for Avis Rental Car since then, and then I was employed with the post office in 1989, working at the airport, Mexico, Maryland, taking this bridge on a night shift for 30 some, over 30 something years. And I'm in disbelief. It's just, you know, it's just uncomprehensive to even believe the bridge is gone, you know, because this is the everyday of life that people take this bridge to get back and forth to work or wherever they're traveling to. And when you talk about the everyday life, folks here on this side of the bridge, uh, they cross the bridge every day and it's this iconic presence on the Baltimore skyline and they're literally standing around here in complete disbelief that it's gone. Uh, they can see the ship out there and they can see the remains of the steel structure in the water. Uh, the bridge primarily serves people in northern Anne Arundel County, crossing over here to eastern Baltimore County and the bridge of course is at the uh, east and the mouth of the Baltimore Harbor, uh, uh, just an iconic location here in the city. It uh, carries primarily the heavy truck traffic that can't go through the, the tunnels that are serving the port here, and all of the people on uh, this side of the Baltimore metro area who go back and forth, as you just heard Ms. Barbie. Uh, she said she had crossed the bridge yesterday. A number of other people I've spoken to here in the Turner's Station section of Dundalk, Maryland, uh, said they crossed uh, commuting yesterday. One guy I just spoke to a moment ago, we haven't been able to turn his sound around, said he crossed the bridge last night at about 12.15. Everybody here gets this sense that it could have been them. Uh, it's very personal to people here because so many people use the bridge, they're familiar with it, they've been up on it, 
uh, and they know what it's like to be up there above the water and uh, it just feels so personal to them and because their houses shook they feel like they're part of this calamity and disaster. That's the kind of, situ uh, kind of reactions we're getting here in Dundalk, Maryland on the north side of the bridge. Let me throw it back to you. Scott, before we let you go, I've got to ask, as a longtime Marylander, um, from, very familiar with that area, uh, when you turn around and look at the state of the Key Bridge right now, what goes through your mind? Well, it's, it's the same kind of disbelief as everybody else. I've crossed the bridge uh, hundreds of times, uh, cross it at least weekly. It, as I said, it's an iconic figure on the Baltimore skyline, and it just doesn't exist. And uh, for the hundreds and thousands and millions of us that have crossed this bridge, it's just hard to believe that, hey, I was up there too one time. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, it's a disaster. Uh, and, it, and it really personally affects people because of the iconic nature of this bridge and because of the terrible apparent loss of life that's occurred. Everybody's mind is on that, trying to imagine uh, what could have possibly happened last night and what it may have been like for the two people that we know survived this. It's an unthinkable tragedy, and uh, we are thinking of the families, the victims, of course, um, but also the first responders on right. the scene doing that tough work, yep. that and, hard work. And the people there, that their whole sense of normalcy has been shattered. Yep. People like that woman that Scott spoke with. We are getting a lot of questions from uh, you all about this, so let's share a little more information about the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. It took five years to build. It opened on March 23rd, 1977. It just celebrated, uh, yesterday was Maryland Day. Mm -hmm. It just celebrated 47 years uh, this past Saturday. This four lane bridge is just over a mile and a half long. It crosses the Patapsco River over the Baltimore Harbor. And it is named, of course, for the author of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. We've got a story up on our website answering these questions and more, and it's on our homepage, WUSA9. Com. We are going to continue to follow this story, the key bridge collapse in Baltimore throughout the morning. We continue to monitor it as the scene unfolds. We'll do that live for you. You're going to get updates right here, push alerts on the WUSA 9 app, and new posts on WUSA9.com throughout the morning. It's 9-12. We'll be right back.